So this video is going to be about acids and bases and the pH scale. So before we get started, we need to look at what an acid and a base actually are and how they work. So an acid is going to be anything that increases the concentration of hydrogen atoms in a solution. So for example, when we have hydrochloric acid and we put that in water, it's going to split apart into a proton, which is a hydrogen atom, and a chlorine ion. And so because we're splitting it apart and we're adding more hydrogen to the solution, that's why this is acting as an acid. So a base is going to do the opposite. So a base is going to decrease the amount of hydrogen atoms in the solution. So bases can do this through two different ways. They can do it directly or indirectly. So if a base is going to reduce the concentration of hydrogen atoms directly, then that base is going to interact directly with that hydrogen atom. So an example would be ammonia. So we have our ammonia and we add it to a solution. And that ammonia will interact directly with a hydrogen atom to form ammonium. And when it does that, it takes hydrogen atoms out of solution. So it's going to make this solution less acidic or more basic. So now a base can also do this indirectly. So an example of that would be sodium hydroxide. So when we add sodium hydroxide to a solution, it's going to split up into a sodium atom and a hydroxide ion. And so now this hydroxide ion is able to interact with a hydrogen atom and form water. So through these two steps, this base is able to decrease the amount of hydrogen atoms in the solution. So now that we know how acids and bases work, we can look at the pH scale. So pH scale is going to be the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen atoms in your solution. So anytime you see P and something else, the lowercase p means take the negative log, and then this H right here just means the concentration of hydrogen atoms. And so it's a logarithmic scale, which means that every change in a pH unit is going to be a tenfold increase or decrease in the concentration of hydrogen atoms. So for example, if we start at a pH of 6 and then go down to a pH of 5, which is going to be getting more acidic, then that's a 10 times difference between these two uh, pH units. So a pH of 5 is going to be 10 times more acidic than a pH of 6. And so also there's two important relationships that we can remember for um, aqueous solutions, which are going to be solutions where the solvent is water uh, when they're at 25 degrees Celsius. That can help us figure out what the pH would be. So those two relationships are going to be firstly the concentration of hydrogen atoms times the concentration of hydroxide ions is going to equal 10 to the negative 14th. And then the second is going to be that your pH, which is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, plus pOH, which would be the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration, is going to equal 14. And so both of these only work when water is at 25 degrees Celsius and the solution is aqueous. And so the last thing that we're going to talk about is buffers. So buffers are going to be solutions that contain an acid and its corresponding base. And so these two molecules are going to be able to interact with one another and with their surroundings to minimize any changes in hydroxide and hydrogen ion concentrations and therefore minimize any changes in pH. So this is really important in our own bodies, in our blood. So we have a buffer system called the carbonic acid buffer system in our blood that helps to keep our blood at a normal pH and to help maintain homeostasis within our bodies. So buffers are going to be important for all sorts of different chemical processes and biological processes. So it's really important to understand concepts of acids and bases, the pH scale, uh, as well as buffers. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.